Greetings from the planet Earth to all you YouTubers out there. Many are confused by the word mansions. You know? I know it's kind of funny to think because everything's Beverly Hills style mansions. When they when I think of what Jesus spoke, in my father's house are many mansions. The mistranslation of the word is amazing. Take a look at your Ezekiel 41 as an example, along with 1 Kings 6 where it tells you that he puts the little rooms, and that's what they meant, a room. If you read it, you'll see that there's chambers. These chambers are what he was talking about. The day and side were chambers, little rooms for people on the walls. Now, some people want to think fancy this and fancy that, but in my father's house are many mansions. How can you have mansions in a house? It is a misunderstanding of words. Back in the day, leasing meant telling lies. Today, we use it as a time uh, uh, limited uh, contract. You lease a car for 36 months. That's not what leasing meant to God. Leasing meant lying in the days the Bible was written. The words we use change over time. People forget that. And they put modern understanding of words to what the old words meant without having any understanding of the old words at all. Why would he say about these chambers that were built against the walls of the house and around them, both of the temple and of the oracle, he made chambers round about? They're there for a reason. Those are the chambers he was speaking. So when God's house comes down, the new Jerusalem, there are many chambers in my father's house would be a better way of putting it just a quick thought that i thought maybe some of you should look at open the bible and read it just don't quote a few verses look up things that you don't understand look at the definition of the biblical meaning of mansions they got one out there i looked at before i put it in the one it had a picture and it showed what basically looked like an apartment building well that's the way it is okay and just some people just don't understand that they're thinking Beverly Hills 90210 or something. I honestly heard some people in a Christian chat talking about how they're going to have a fancy mansion and a couple of others. And they're going to have several cars and 10 of this and 10 of that. And they're going, worldly eyes among the lukewarm. And it was so sad, right? And the Lord gave one of these guys, or the young lad, a vision and he didn't quite understand it. And, and, and he started explaining it, and the Lord let me know what it was right away before the guy even got finished. And I typed what it was right away. And it was uh, Matthew 25, where he was speaking of the goats and the sheep going to the left and the right. And in his vision that the Lord gave him, it stopped before he found out if he was going to go right and left. And that was God warning him. He didn't want to let him know, but the, he, the choice was his. These worldly things coming out of his mouth were really, really sad. And sadly, they had people in that room going, well, God didn't literally mean this, and he didn't literally mean that. Oh, brothers and sisters, beware of the lukewarm out there trying to drag you down. They changed the meaning of words. The greatest trick Satan ever pulled is making you think he did not exist, brothers and sisters. Don't believe the lies and the heresies out there. This is the great falling away that the Bible warns you about. Do not be deceived. Read your Hebrews 5, verses 11 to 14. Those on the milk of the word are as babes to the Lord. They're unskilled in righteousness. They'll be easily deceived. That's why he said, two in the field, one taken. Two at the mill, one taken. For they know not the name, the word of the Lord. They turn around and wave Bibles, quote a few verses, and thousands of them are flocking to a fake Jesus in Russia right now. And the Bible warns you straight up. Some are going to say he's here, he's there, he's everywhere, but don't fall for it. Certain things must happen before Jesus returns. The Antichrist must come first. That third temple will be up any day, brothers and sisters. And I don't think it's going to go up on that temple mound. I really don't. I believe it's going to be in the city of David, right next to it down there. Because they have the fountain there needed to wash themselves before going into their temple, which is a prerequisite for them. Plus, when they had issues with Paul there, they sent for the Romans to come bring him up to the Romans. How can you be up? When you're on the bottom of a hill, you can't. Any military commander out there knows, and you can look at history, 
whoever takes the high ground, they do it for a reason because it's harder to fight uphill. It gives them the advantage. You don't think the Romans were smart enough to figure that one out? They were conquerors. Of course they took the high ground. They wouldn't have cared if a temple was on it. They would have taken it over because they were Romans. The foolish people forget that. There's no water source on the top of the temple mount. There's no way there would be a temple there. How could the priests wash themselves? Get guys carrying buckets up and down the hill all day long? I don't think so. They had a spring right there to wash up. And you look, and that's right there in the city of David. Right? Take a look on how it's grass and hillside area right now. And underneath, they're digging it up. And they're finding all sorts of things. And they found where David worshipped it. Everything. Have a look, brothers and sisters. Do not let these worldly coal people deceive you. Remember the parable of the ten virgins. Where did the five lukewarm virgins go for their oil? To the coal, brothers and sisters. Don't be among them. Open your Bible and read for yourself. God is about a personal relationship and faith. Not about buildings or names of religions or the titles of men. He just wants a personal relationship with you. So have a talk with Jesus today. And let him know you care for him and love him. Just as much as he loves you. He's still breathing because he loves you and he's giving you a chance to get right with him. Think about it. Crack open the Bible and have a good read. Bye-bye.